Bonsuelo, everybody. Okay, what we're going to start talking about today, we're going to have two classes on trigonometry. The first one is going to be without the calculator, and the second one will be with the calculator. Okay, the first thing you have to understand is this. A trig function is a mathematical operation. Remember, with like logs, that's a mathematical operation, just like plus or minus. What's a log? It's a mathematical operation that tells you to find the exponent when the bases are the same. Well, what's a trig function? It's a mathematical operation that changes an angle into some sort of number. Okay? Make sure you understand that. There are two fundamentally different things. There's an angle and there's a number. You always take the trig function of the angle and you get just a straight number. Okay? So what the trig function is telling you to do is do something relative to an angle. Now, for basic trigonometry, which is all we're going to get into, that angle will be in a right triangle, okay? You'll find out later it doesn't have to be, but for us it's going to be. Okay, there are six trig functions you need to know. You need to have these definitions memorized, okay? And uh, you probably know the first three. They're sine, cosine, and tangent. And remember, you're taking the sine of an angle, the cosine of an angle, tangent of an angle. You always take the trig functions of an angle. Now, what do you get? The sine of an angle is the opposite side of the triangle. Remember, these are sides, right? You're taking the trig function of the angle. This is a side relative to the angle. It's the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine of an angle is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Tangent of an angle is the opposite side over the adjacent side. Now, there are three other ones that you're probably not familiar with, and yes, you need to know them. They are the cosecant of an angle, the secant of an angle, and tangent of an angle. And they're just the reciprocals of sine, cosine, and tangent. So cosecant is hypotenuse over the opposite side, secant is hypotenuse over the adjacent side, and cotangent is the adjacent side over the opposite side. And you just have to have those memorized. There's no, uh, you know, magic trick to it. Uh, there's a little saying that you're probably familiar with to memorize the first three, and that is Sokotoa. Okay, I don't know why it just did that, but... And that's sine of an angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine of an angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of an angle is opposite over adjacent. And then cosecant is just the reciprocal of sine. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Okay. And it has to be relative to an angle. Okay. Notice this angle theta, that's just a variable it's a Greek letter, just like pi is a Greek letter. It's just a variable that's representing the angle. That's got a specific position. If I call this an, the angle that I'm finding the trig functions of, and I'll just call it beta, let's say, this would all of a sudden be the opposite. This would be the adjacent, and this would be the hypotenuse still. So it has to be relative to a specific angle inside the triangle. Now I'm going to get rid of these because I don't want you to think, you know, I'm changing the definitions. I'm not. It's opposite the angle, adjacent to the angle, and then the hypotenuse is just the longest side. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So find the six trig functions of beta. Well, first of all, what we need is we need the third side. So I'm just going to call this x. Okay. So we use the Pythagorean theorem, 3 squared plus x squared equals 4 squared. So x squared equals 16 minus 9 is 7, and x equals square root of 7 and negative square root of 7. But again, since it's a length, I'm going to throw out the negative. Okay, well, the sine, so this side is square root of 7. The sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. 
and the tangents the opposite side over the adjacent. Okay? Now, for the cosecant, secant, and cotangent, I'm just going to take the reciprocals of these. And then, of course, the ones that end up with a radical in the denominator, you have to rationalize. So I'll multiply by square root of 7 over square root of 7, which is 4 square root of 7 over 7. And this one we, we rationalize, and you get 3 square root of 7 over 7. Okay? And quite frankly, that's about it. You know, you just find the three sides of the triangle and make sure it's relative to a specific angle. It's relative to this angle. Okay? If I had called this one down here beta, then all of a sudden 3 would be the op, which I didn't, but 3 would be the opposite and square root of 7 would be the adjacent. So it's got to be relative to a specific angle in the triangle. All right, hope that helps. We'll talk about the calculator next time.